Hello and welcome to my video. This video is called the Sega Virtual Processor versus the Super Nintendo Super FX chip. And there's only really two games you can show on a video like this, and that's Star Fox and Virtual Racing, because Sega only released one game for the Sega Mega Drive using the Virtual Processor, or the Sega Virtual Processor. And really the notable game what really showed the graphic capability of the FX chip was Star Fox. There wasn't really anything else on the Super Nintendo that really impressed with the FX chip. So they're the two games that's going to be featured. I'm going to talk you through what I think of both games and which one I think come out better and who did their chips better and who got the best out of their machines with their chips. So let's start off with Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. So here's the game cartridge for Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. As unlike most Super Nintendo cartridges, they added two layers at both ends of the cartridge, what is the FX chip, to produce graphic performance. The FX chip was mainly known for sort of tricking you into believing you got 3D, not actually giving you pure 3D. So everybody has the illusion that Star Fox was actually a 3D game on the Super Nintendo. That is it, it was just an illusion. Star Fox was kind of 3D, but it wasn't full 3D. What you could do with Star Fox is you could get 3D polygons on the screen, what made like the enemies and the ship you, you use yourself look 3D, but you couldn't turn the ship around and do a full 360 degree turn and go the other way, meaning that the game was not 3D. But saying that, the graphics on Star Fox were very impressive and I really did enjoy this game, it was by far the best Super Nintendo game in my opinion ever made because it was the most fun to play and I was mind blown when I first played this game I thought well why can't Sega do this but my answers were well my wish came true a year later when Sega produced Virtual Racing and we'll go into that in a minute but let's stick to Star Fox as you can see it's not very colourful, it does run pretty slowly but the gameplay is solid and the graphics are impressive and the music and sound quality being a Super Nintendo is pretty damn good you can't argue with that, they managed to get voice music and gunshots all at the same time on the cartridge but I don't think I've ever remembered that on a Sega game where you could hear three different separate sounds on one at the same time on a Sega cartridge on a Mega Drive but Nintendo had a better sound chip and they show that on this game so it's got good sound, good graphics and really good gameplay but did it beat virtual racing and did it beat the Sega virtual processor let's find out and take a look at virtual racing okay here's virtual racing for the Sega Mega Drive now what really impressed me about this game is it actually is full 3D and I was amazed by the colour as well but being the Sega Mega Drive will only produce 500 colours compared to the Super Nintendo's 32,000 colours I was really impressed by the colour display by virtual racing and even more impressed by the speed of the game. The processing power on this game was remarkable. This is a 1988 games console and it produced full 3D graphics. Yes, it had to use a Sega Virtual Processor to do that, but I was gobsmacked by the gameplay. It was fantastic gameplay. I enjoyed playing this game all the time. I couldn't stop playing it. I was addicted to the time trial, trying to beat my own time. It was really, really good. I still play it today and I still feel it's a very good port of the game, even though a lot of people say it's the poorest port of the game. But I would say that's the Sega Saturn version. It's definitely the worst port of the game. This game for a Sega Mega Drive is really impressive. The polygons you can see on the screen are really impressive. There's uh, got to be qu quite a lot of cars on the screen as well. People forget that you are racing against quite a lot of cars, but it takes a lot of processing power. To do that there's no pop-up on the game you can see there's no pop-up on the game the road doesn't fit in as you go along it's very solid a very good import very fast paced enjoyable game and it had a two-player mode as well what well, is even more impressive that they can fit not only a 3d game on a sega mega drive from a 1988 technology but they could also add a two-player mode to it as well and the game price in the uk as far as i can remember a lot of people say it's a hundred pounds but I can only remember paying £70 for this game when it came out and that's the same price as Star Fox and on top of that most Super Nintendo games were £60 anyway and Nintendo added another tenner for the FX chip but I stick to the game Virtual Racing is a masterpiece for the Sega Mega Drive there's no two ways about it 
I wish they made more. I wish they put Virtual Fighter on the Sega Virtual Processor, Daytona, and other games. I wish they did that because it would have been much better for them to do that than to release the 32X, or as a complete failure. The Mega Drive sold in the millions. If they just keep releasing these games, yeah, there's a high price, seventy pounds a game, but you was giving old technology a reboost. You was bringing more life into the Sega Mega Drive. It would have lived on a lot longer. I wish Sega did that. Anyway, now let's go to the review and see which one come out on top. So this is the verdict. I liked both games. I was impressed by both games back in the day. Star Fox impressed me massively when I first played Star Fox. I was the only Nintendo, Super Nintendo game I actually enjoyed playing. I was a massive Sega fan and I didn't really enjoy any Super Nintendo games. And until Star Fox came out, then Donkey Kong Country followed that, what was also impressive and very very playable but up until then I wasn't impressed by Super Mario World or anything like that I thought this was just better than NES graphics what's the big deal but Star Fox changed my opinion on the Super Nintendo but saying that I can't give it the edge over virtual racing because Star Fox didn't produce full 3D even though it had superior sound quality anyone can tell you that the sound quality on Star Fox is really good but it didn't produce full 3D even though it gave a good illusion of 3D and it allows you to look like and feel like you was playing 3D but you wasn't actually playing full 3D with virtual racing you were playing full 3D and the pace of the game, the import of the game was so impressive to be done on a 1998 games console and as I said I was amazed by the colour as well I think that's the most colourful Sega Mega Drive game I've ever seen and plus, you know, the power they managed to squeeze into that chip and squeeze into that cartridge and push from the Sega Mega Drive was really impressive and for Star Fox I didn't get that impression too much I thought you know Nintendo, Super Nintendo probably could have done a bit more on that they could have used a more powerful yeah. chip I wasn't that impressed with the FX chip at all even though I was impressed by the gameplay of Star Fox so I'm giving the win to the Sega Mega Drive and to Virtual Racing and the Sega Virtual Processing Chip I hope you enjoyed this video because I enjoyed made it, making it and I hope to see you next time for some more videos Thank you for watching.